it's a pleasure to be here. I know this is a great event. I um, delighted to be here and to talk to you about the state of open source. Um, we uh, put together together. Um, I, I work for uh, Perforce, uh, especially specifically a brand called Open Logic, where we uh, provide technical support for open source software. Uh, and we work with OSI, the Open Source Initiative, uh, on this survey. This is the second year we do it together, although we've been doing the survey um, for many years. And it was a global survey, right? We cover every single region in the world. Uh, we survey in industry professionals about the use of open source in their organization. And uh, we had close to a thousand respondents from every region, from the top 20 industries. So what I have here today uh, for you is to show you the highlights of that report. And it really truly, truly tells you where are we uh, in terms of the use of open source software in organizations. And, and the study was very specific on the use of open source in organizations. Uh, I mean, of course, some of the answers uh, to the survey room were more of uh, you know what a developer uses or or not, but the idea was always to focus on the use of open source in our, our organizations. So uh, a quick introduction. I hope you can see my slides there. Uh, in my screen looked a bit small, but um, uh, I'm a chief evangelist. I talked all things about open source and uh, uh, also a uh, senior director of product management for the Open Logic brand. Uh, you can see my contact details there and um, you know, available on Twitter, LinkedIn, and, and so on. So I've uh, been working in the, uh, in the open source space for many, many years now, uh, working for companies like Red Hat, uh, IBM, and, and others also on the open source security space. So uh, you know, happy to always talk about, always happy to talk about technology, especially about uh, open source. Um, hopefully you can see the slides because I, I don't see them that well here from my, from my screen. Um, the, let me start with a quick intro, and, and I, I've been using this slide for some time, um, and I keep updating it, and it keeps growing. And it, this is just to tell you, just to give you an idea of how many, uh, how much software it's out there, right? Most of it is really open source with open source licenses, uh, two, more than 2.3 million in NPM, right? So it's all the JavaScript, Node.js uh, code, more than half a million in Maven. Close to a million, four hundred thirty-seven thousand, and PyPy, right? And the same I can say for PHP and Packlist or Nugget. Nugget has been growing a lot, uh, and Ruby Gems. Probably the, of these uh, six main repositories that correspond to like most popular uh, programming languages, Ruby is the one that's probably grow, growing the, the slowest. But uh, it's pretty amazing to see these numbers, right? And and by the way, the the background that you see there on the stars is. You know, we're trying to kind of come up with analogy that, you know, there's so much open source, right? So, you know, there's, there are so many uh, stars in the in the universe, but more about uh, more instead of the stars, more about, you know, wh why don't we focus on the on the larger projects and and, you know, the larger projects for the most part belong to uh, open source foundations. And, and here's some of the numbers, right? Uh, more than 370 um, projects in, open, in the Linux Foundation, uh, on the Apache Foundation, on the Linux Foundation, on obviously the Clips Foundation, and then all the other uh, foundations. But these are the open source projects that are the most used, the most popular, what organizations are, are using, right? You know, obviously not forgetting the millions of other uh, open source that it's, it's out there. And this was just to, to set the scene for, for the, the survey results, right? And let's start with, let's start with that. Um, we ask a question and I, we got a lot of attention uh, and asking just, just from the get-go, just from the beginning, we ask, uh, have you increased the use of open source in your organization over the last 12 months, over the last year? And 80% say yes. 80% of the respondents said, yes, we have increased the use of open source software. So keep in mind that we're not even asking if you use open source, right? Everyone is using, everyone with software has open source software, right? Is using open source software. Uh, you know, most organizations now are really software organizations, right? They, everyone is running software and they're running open source. So it's not even if they're using. Here the question is if they increase the use of open source. 
and it was 80% yes, uh, 41% said yes significantly, right? Whatever meaning the, the individual responded gave to that significant increase on the use of open source. Uh, the next uh, interesting point, and, and I, I found it uh, really, really interesting, is the, um, you know, we ask who are the most used open source technologies, right? And, um, you know, obviously, you know, in terms of the software development lifecycle tools, you know, that, that leads. But if you see the percentages are very close, you know, the takeaway for me here is every, every open source, of course, is about all the different technologies within software and hardware. And uh, everyone is using it. Everyone is using it across the board, right? You know, number two, not surprised there, containers, container orchestration, databases, data technologies at the top of the most used, right? Um, the use of containers actually increased from 18% uh, last year to 33%. Some people might say, well, that's that's low. But remember, we, we were serving, you know, across the world, uh, globally and across all, all industries. And, and then when we ask the same question, but uh, a little bit different, instead of which ones you use the most, which ones receive the most investment? And uh, it didn't change much, right? It, it basically added the top three were the same, and we added the, the content management systems, cloud native tools, and DevOps tools. And those are the tools that are you know, obviously receiving more investment. There's also more commercial products there, some of them just commercial open source software, some of them completely proprietary but obviously as you as you well know uh, there's a lot of, of devops tooling now and growing into the the cloud native uh, tooling uh, everything in the everything in the in the report we kind of broke down by uh, company size uh, industry um, region in some cases so everything has uh, you know, we have information about all those kind of demographics or firmographics, right? And this is just one example in terms of the investment, right, on, uh, for size of the companies. And I kind of highlighted or, or circled there, you know, interesting, right? The, the larger organizations are investing more on in DevOps tooling. Um, the smaller organizations, to my surprise, they are actually, you know, obviously using more of the database, open source database, data technologies, right? So uh, interesting, interesting numbers there. Um, and reasons to use open source software, right? Uh, uh, why? I mean, you know, I mean, we know everyone is using it, but it's important to know what are the main reasons. And, and this is very interesting, right? And and I, you know, I, I'm really happy to see at the top. And by the way, at least for the next, for the uh, similar, exactly the same as last year, the number one reason to use open source software in organizations it's access to innovation and the latest technologies right access to innovation and the latest technologies of course improves development velocity because you don't start from scratch so that's number two and again the the percentages are very close into the different reasons uh, another highlight there is that the cost reduction cost reduction didn't even make it to the top eight it's actually at number number nine right and and this tells you why i mean Basically, software, open source software, is part of what we what we do. And uh, yes, happens to be for the most part uh, free. Uh, but you're also investing on the technologies, right? You're also investing on the whole infrastructure. So cost reduction actually it's went down. Now, when we break down that by by region, we have uh, different numbers there, right? Uh, North America, it's more about the the, the functionality. Uh, in the UK, uh, you know, ability to contribute, right? That, that's the number one reason. They want to be part of the, the open source communities. And, and in Europe, actually, still was the, the no license license cost. What are the, the top open source support challenges? And, um, and this is interesting, right? Um, th there's always challenges with technology. Um, number one, uh, maintaining security policies and compliance. And, and just to let you know, when, when we were putting together this, these questions, um, you know, I said, well, every time you ask about security, people are going to say, yes, security is important to me, right? Regardless of how much they are doing in terms of uh, security or cybersecurity. Uh, so we, but, but it, well, a lot of things are happening in the last year. So, uh, you know, a lot of government initiatives, uh, industry initiatives. I think obviously open source security had to be part of the of the survey. So we kind of narrowed down that uh, that question, and and saying well, not 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 answer just if 
you care about security, but answer if, if you're actually doing something. So we narrow it down as maintaining security policies and compliance, right? You know, running your scans, your yeah, pen testing and, and all the things. And, and still was the number one support challenge, right? That's, that's a challenge, security. Number two, uh, not surprised probably for, for you, it's the lack of skills, experience and proficiency, right? There are many uh, job openings out there for experts on the different technologies, right? We, uh, the engineers, developers, uh, you know, they're becoming full stack developers. They know multiple technologies, but, but that's not enough, right? There's a lot of jobs in open source, in open source security as well. DevOps, uh, obviously cloud native, where the skills are um, in high demand, right? Especially the experience and proficiency. For large organizations, they do have the, the people, they have the personnel, but not necessarily the, the experience and, and proficiency. Uh, number three, a uh, very interesting support challenge, which is you know the, the constant updates and the constant uh, improvements and enhancements and bug fixing and vulnerability fixings of open source projects. So, so the challenge is really to keep up with updates and patches, right? Do you remember Log4j last year? Um, you know, the fix came in a couple of days, right? But, but it was more about, you know, how quick organizations can go and update or find the software that it was used in Log4j, right? Get their proper uh, inventory and so or software bill of materials and then do the updates, uh, apply the updates, the patches. Um, in terms of the challenge, here is the, the full list, uh, maintaining security policies and compliance, as I mentioned, number one. Uh, interesting statistics, 46% of, uh, this is from a different chart, but 46% of uh, organizations are performing security scans. I think that's a good number. We're getting close to 50%. Of course, not enough. Uh, if you are watching, if you're listening to this, um, you know, keep an eye on that, right? All software, uh, you, you, you want to do your uh, security scans. In some companies, they have more formal compliance than others, uh, but it's important uh, to, to keep up with that. And as I said, for the most part, it's more to keep up with the updates and patches rather than, you know, oh, there's a vulnerability with no fix. You know, for the most part, uh, vulnerabilities are disclosed with their corresponding uh, fix. End of life, uh, uh, open source is interesting, right? Uh, and something that sometimes people don't pay attention to because open source projects keep moving so fast, right? They're new versions all the time. Uh, communities can support, cannot support older versions, right? So the life cycles get shorter and shorter. And in some cases, they just support the last version, right? In some cases, there's you know, what is called maintenance support just for you know, major bugs or, or major vulnerabilities they are applied fixes to them, and, and that will be the, the long-term support, right? what is called the LTS in, in some of the open source projects. Um, but people forget, sometimes they just forget about them, right? Or if it's something, you know, an application that's been running for, for a long time, you know, no one is updating the software, even though vulnerabilities can be discovered at any time, right? So it was interesting numbers, for example, on CentOS, CentOS that uh, went in of life at the end of 2021. Uh, so it's been more than a year uh, now. 15% uh, of the organizations, the, the respondents, are still using CentOS. Uh, AngularJS also went in off life at the end of 2021. 15% uh, of organizations are still using, still have applications with AngularJS. In the large, larger organizations, it's actually 20%. Right, and again, there's always the risk there to you know, newly, newly discovered vulnerability or a newly discovered exploit on a vulnerability, it's out there. And if you don't have, uh, if you have an end of life uh, software, well, you, you, you have less options to get patches and fixes, right? The community is not gonna go on. Once it's end of life, the software is not, doesn't get updated unless you find other, um, you know, companies or, or someone else that will apply patches and will go on and fix for that. The recommendation, of course, is to go and migrate to the next major version or the next major uh, or the next uh, you know, equivalent product or pro open source project. Um, business critical to open source. We ask actually specifically, you know, type, tell us exactly what are the most business critical, what's the most business critical open source software in your organization? 
And uh, you can see some different logos there, no, no surprises. There's some pretty common uh, open source projects there. But what you see on the boxes and the eight boxes, is those were the top mentions. Uh, I was a bit surprised. I mean, no, no surprise with G Git and Node.js, Jenkins in some cases, right? But uh, I, I was a bit surprised with PHP. I mean, there are obviously thousands and thousands of uh, web apps uh, on PHP and, and WordPress. WordPress is based on, on PHP, right? WordPress. Um, it's very, very popular and obviously business critical for many, many organizations, right? Um, obviously, we want to ask about the how the organizations contributing to open source projects, uh, sponsoring open source organizations. Uh, and we got about 35, 37% uh, of organizations contributing in different ways to open source communities and open source organizations. I think it's good. I think, uh, I mean, it's growing. It was a 55% uh, increase over um, the previous year's uh, survey. Very important to, you know, not only just be a consumer, but also be part of them, right? And it doesn't have to be code. It could be, you know, opening tickets, raising issues, uh, um, you know, letting people know when, when there's something suggesting functionality. Uh, or, or or sponsoring some of, some of the events, right? It goes a long way for uh, people that are uh, the communities working on on open source. Um, software real materials. You probably heard about software real materials over the last uh, few months, right? When we talk about more about about open source security. So we had to ask, you know, who's generating software bill of materials? More than twenty five percent of the organizations uh, are uh, or generating S bombs software bill of materials. I think that's good, but there's obviously room for, for improvement. In some industries that are more regulated, uh, in the US, for example, there have been some uh, uh, different initiatives uh, on the on government. So they are actually, you know, it's becoming mandatory to generate uh, S-bombs. So we saw a higher percentage there. Um, and, and I think it's going to increase for, for next year. And then in some of the, you know, regulated industries like banking, financial services, we also see more. S bombs software bill of, of materials. Um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that for next year we are going to have more more of that. Um, now, organizations use open source software, as you know, in different ways, right? And uh, we listed uh, a number of kind of milestones or important uh, steps uh, in terms of using, in terms of the maturity, what we call the maturity of the open source software within organizations, right? And, and you can see on the chart, you know, the different kind of steps. Um, it was, as I mentioned earlier, interesting to see at 47, 46% that organizations are doing uh, security scans to identify vulnerabilities on, on open source. Uh, that's good to see. That also shows part of the kind of the maturity in the use of open source software. And then kind of at the bottom of the, of the chart, you can see, you know, there are organizations doing inner source projects, the organizations establishing their open source program offices, OSPOS, right? Uh, I've seen some surveys with the higher rate on OSPOS. Uh, I was a bit surprised because I think last year was a little bit higher, uh, but I think there's a trend that, that it's going to continue to grow because organizations see the benefits of, you know, kind of having a um, governance over uh, open source, the use of open source, open source policies in terms of the use within organizations, investments, the strategy about what technologies, uh, where to contribute, uh, of course, uh, things around open source licenses. So are important to have uh, open source program offices or, you know, it doesn't have to be named like that, but some of those functions, right? Um, what else? I have a few more things for you in the next few minutes, really quick. Do you, obviously, the maturity in open source changes for small organizations versus large organizations. Obviously, there's more budget on larger organizations. They could have legal teams more familiar with uh, familiar with open source licensing, for example, or they could have uh, S-bombs uh, generated software bill of materials. They might have the tools to generate the software bill of materials, right? Uh, whereas for small organizations, it's a different type of, of dynamic. So I'm going to go uh, a bit quick here, and I'm just going to show you, to tell you like the top the, the most used, this is just going category by category on the different open source software and which words were the most uh, most used uh, open source uh, technologies in, uh, over the last year, right? In terms of infrastructure, there's a ton of open source software that relates to you know what we consider kind of software infrastructure. 
You can see Apache HTTP, Tomcat, Tommy, Nginx at the top there. Linux distributions, I think no surprise with Ubuntu, uh, but you can see so many of the, the distributions out there, including newer ones like, like Rocky, Rocky Linux. Um, for and, and by the way, everything also have the information about the challenges. This is an example by, by, by industry, all that information available in the, in the report. Uh, top cloud native open source technologies. I think this is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. We're going to have to add a lot more uh, cloud native technologies there, uh, but you will recognize some of them here. Obviously, Docker Kubernetes, but Open Telemetry and Jigger and Nomad and, and Knative and others that are becoming really, really popular, right? So, and if you haven't used any of these, you know, keep take a look. Like these are are becoming more and more uh, popular. Programming languages. I think no surprise there. JavaScript. Uh, Java and Python, Node.js, uh, leading the way. Uh, frameworks mainly around JavaScript and and um, and Java, right? Spring Boot and and things like uh, React and 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 others. Uh, top open source data technologies. This is interesting, right? It's no longer just the you know commercial relational database that uh, that that you're familiar with. This is more about the, uh, you know, so many options. There's so many options there. And, you know, with the more use of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, deep learning technologies, we still need to kind of handle the data, right? So you see a grow on things like Apache Spark and Kafka and, 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 and many others, right? Uh, Postgres, MySQL, and, and MongoDB are the, the top three. They were the top three the last two years. Um, Tooling, build tools, I uh, think no surprises here. Uh, we saw a grow on uh, Nexus and Artifactory. Um, you know, people going in that direction on using some kind of repositories. Uh, but there's there's every, there's a lot of every there's a bit of everything here, including uh, testing testing um, uh, tooling, uh, automation configuration. You see the ones like Ansible and Puppet, but also uh, newer ones like CubeSpray, CubeAdmin. I was a bit surprised how popular they they are. Um, so a good number here. Again, if you haven't tried some of these, you know there's a good introduction here. At least there's a there's a new there were a few names here for for a lot of people, right? CI/CD tooling. Uh, CI/CD tooling is interesting because people are using also uh, commercial um, or proprietary uh, CI/CD tools, uh, but not not so. And, and Git uh, GitHub Actions is not considered open source, so it was not on the not on the on the list, but you can see so many, right? Including the, the ones that are growing, which are the cont container native, kind of cloud native, like the Spinnaker, Jenkins X, Tecton, and, and so on. Uh, and finally, uh, I've mentioned that very important. We saw 37% of uh, organizations contributing to open source. And here's the list uh, breakdown by by the foundations and organizations. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of participation, contribution, sponsorships. Which is great to see, right? It's it's really really great to see, and uh, hopefully we you and, and your organization go and and contribute more to this these uh, foundations because we benefit all, right? We 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 can go and and continue to develop and enhance uh, the open source technologies. Um, if everything I mentioned, it's it's based on that 2023 state of open source report. Uh, if you scan that uh, QR code, you have access to to download the the, the report, uh, a free report. And I think I have like five minutes or less for so, for some questions. So um, let me see if I can see. I, I haven't checked uh, on the chat, so let me take a quick look. Hi. So you actually don't have to do that. I I had a look for you. And um, thank you very much, Ravi. Thank you very much um, for this um, very good overview um, of the of the survey. Um, and actually, that leads over to, to one of the first questions. Um, can you please tell us um, what kind of organizations were surveyed? Was it all businesses or was it also nonprofits and government agencies and things like that? It, it was for, for all of them. Yeah. Um, for all of them. All of them. Uh, we covered the top 20 industries, but including nonprofits. And, and, and as I said, it was, it was global. Uh, we included from every single region, from Australia, New Zealand, uh, South Africa, everywhere. Okay. Um, another question we got um, is, um, is there any differentiation um, of important open source software use between integration into own products and what um, they use um, in the supply chain for building products? Or is that the same? 
Well, if you recall on like a couple of uh, the first couple of the slides where I mentioned, well, you, we have millions of open source software that refers to uh, libraries, right? And that's what developers use as part of their software development. You know, if you're a developer, you know that you bring a lot of libraries. Sometimes you don't even know what they are, right? But you, you're just including hundreds of libraries into your, your software. That's one part. And then the other part, is the the more of the kind of infrastructure i'm going to call it infrastructure software infrastructure technologies that are the ones that are becoming more popular that have more contributors you know the kubernetes the different data technologies all of that that you know are part of foundations many organizations are, are in, contributing with resources engineers to that so that's kind of the separation but but it's both right and that's what makes open source great yeah okay um and then is there um, did you have any data or did you have um, any responses on how um, they manage vulnerabilities with end of life uh, components or yeah yeah i mean the, the way it's you know you have your scanners and there are many options open source and commercial uh, products you run your scan to you identify the open source that you're using so you are creating your software bill of materials or your inventory and then the corresponding, uh, uh, if there's a vulnerability available, or there's a vulnerability for the corresponding open source software and version of the open source software. And, and with that, you know, there's always the recommendation of, well, if you update to this release, then there's a fix. So I, I have to remember, uh, re remind everyone that, you know, for the most part, and I would say more than 90% of the vulnerabilities, no, more than 95% of the vulnerabilities have a fix already. You just have to go to the, you just have to update, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay um i think there are no further questions um via the tool just just one one broader thing to to wrap it up um you mentioned a couple of um of like of trends and things that surprised you um but is there anything any any trend you see that you you find especially interesting yeah uh, multiple things i can talk for an hour on that but uh... <laughs> Uh, you know, very interesting to see. We, one question that we ask about the most desirable technologies, or you know, you're using something. What's the next that do you would like to? And and it was always until last year, it was always uh, containers. You know, using containers, using uh, Kubernetes. So, and not this year. And maybe there are more people now using containers and you know, cloud native environments. And now was AI, machine learning. That's okay. the next thing that organizations want to go. So I was a bit surprised about that. I mean, it, it was a good surprise, and <laughs> and we'll see uh, next year. You know how that that evolves, right? Uh, maybe next year I'll, we'll get some about um, Web three, right? I mean that's also growing, right? So we'll we'll get probably more 